Coming up next, we'll meet a special Oklahoma veteran who served as a B-17 navigator during World War II. But first, here's a brief look at some of the B-17s that are still flying, thanks to the tender, loving care provided for them by enthusiasts all over the world. The images are from the PBS special B-17 Flying Fortress. Sixty-five percent of the B-17 bomber crews that flew missions over Germany in the Second World War did not survive those runs. Many B-17 so-called flying fortresses were shot out of the sky by enemy planes or by anti-aircraft fire. My next guest from Hollis, Oklahoma, was a navigator on one of those B-17s. He survived all 25 of his combat missions and returned home safely. And he's now the subject of a book written by his son, called Kipling's Error 3. We're pleased to be joined this evening by Captain Lloyd Mitchell. Thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. I know you must be very proud of your son for writing this book. Yes, I do appreciate that great deal. And I think that, that uh, you think he did a pretty good job with it, don't you? I do. I think he did a good job. He did an honest job. Mm -hmm. I told him to begin with, no Hollywood, uh -huh. no heroics. Uh -huh. Tell it straight. And it is. It's, it's straight out history. It absolutely is. I haven't read it all yet, but it's, it's fascinating, and I love the way it's put together. And uh, one of the main components in that book is your diary and the diary of four of your crewmates. Now, give us some idea of, of what it took to share that diary. That was not an easy thing, was it? No, it was uh, very personal, the diary. When you write a diary, you don't think 60 years from now it's going to be made public and the world is going to read it. Mm -hmm. So you put down things, you know, that deeply affects you. Mm -hmm. And it was such a personal part of my life that for many years, uh, nobody but my wife read it. Mm -hmm. And finally, I came to the conclusion, well, I'll share it with my son. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, now your son, your son has shared it with everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, that's okay with you, I'm sure, because yes, otherwise sir. this would be lost. Yes, it right. is. It, it's good to know that my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and then on down will have a, a story about their great-granddad. Mm -hmm. and Can you quickly tell us what Kipling's Error 3 means, the title well, of the plane? Well, the radio engineer was kind of a poetic type of fellow, mm -hmm. and he was reminded of the poem that Rudyard Kipling wrote, East is East, West is West, and never the twain shall meet. So we were, in the United States, we were separated uh, from the uh, Mississippi River, East Mississippi River, West. Your crewmates, you mean? The crewmates. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, we had a, quite a background. There were three Polish gunners, one uh, German, German gunner, uh, one Norwegian co-pilot, a Jewish bombardier, <laughs> and then there's about three of us, Heinz 57. Yeah. So we were all, in that sense, you know, from all over, our ancestors all over the world. And how many are still alive? Yeah. Only one, the Only radio one. engineer and myself. There are some wonderful pictures in there of you in the early days and then one reunion when I guess apparently several others yes, were alive yes, too. Yes, a re reunion in the late 80s. I love the picture in the book and you've brought a bigger one of the 15th bombing mission. Uh, give us an idea of what that was like. Well, we were going to Oscherschleben and uh, in going out, we uh, got caught between cloud layers. I was up in the nose of the 17, and I could see the two cloud layers coming together. It was always a little mystery to me why the lead, the lead plane took us into that. Mm -hmm. But we got in there, and then there were 100 or so B-17s 
in the clouds, and of course we were flying close formation. Mm -hmm. And I remember screaming to the pilot, up, up, up. And he jammed the throttles forward and to the left, and we took up, and there were several planes collided mm -hmm. in the clouds. And then we were all scattered, and we had to go home, and the German fighters were parked out there, and they could see the predicament we were in. Mm -hmm. And they picked off a lot of us as we attempted to regroup and fly back home. And that and was really just an example of what happened over and over again. It was just a terrifying experience, yes, wasn't it? Yes, it? it was. It was about the only time that we had to turn back from our target. Seldom did we turn back, but we had to then. We are almost uh, ready to say goodbye, but we're not going to do it before we hear. The, the subtitle of the book is, They Were Good Americans. What does that mean to you? <clears throat> well, it was my way of uh, writing an epitaph to those of my friends that perished, that mm -hmm. didn't come home, and I was writing my diary, and uh, that was my epitaph to them. They and, were good Americans. And in your definition, what is a good American? Somebody that's willing to uh, do his duty, uh, to stay with it, to uh, not quit, and to pay his dues for the privilege of being an American. Captain Mitchell, you are a good American, for sure. I'm so glad that your son decided to write this book and that you shared all your memories with him and with us. Thanks for being here today. It's been a pleasure.